So in Module 5, your chapter is talking about outliers, and there's really three tests that um, the author describes on how to look for outliers, in particular those that are looking for fraud. So just a little bit of background uh, before we get into the lab, which will be a separate video. So when I did a Google search to try to find some graphics to use for outliers, it came up with this. The book called Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell. And it was a very popular book, I don't know, five, six years ago. And it talks about how some people are, you know, extremely successful in their areas. You know, think Michael Jordan and Jeff Bezos and Bill Gates, who have, you know, have exceptional or, you know, outperforming anybody, most everybody else in their fields. So how do we get to that? And it talks about practice and everything. So it talks a little bit more about outliers from a human standpoint. Of course, that's not exactly what we're interested in. We want to look at data. So here, and I know all of you have a concept. So this is just a simple scatter plot, and it shows most of the data points fall in a nice linear line. And there's this other dot just hanging out there saying, here I am, uh, which is a definite outlier. Now, we can find out a lot about a data set by examining those outliers. What's causing them? Is it something that is an exceptional event that we can explain and is legitimate? Or, obviously, what we're using them for to identify potential risk for fraud. What transactions are potentially fraudulent or at least uh, or an error or some other, you know, inconsistency that we can't explain. Those are the ones we want to look at further. So uh, here's a small data set of outliers in this graphic. So the data's got six points, 50, and then 15, 10, or 15, 12, 13, 15, 15. So six data points. Obviously, just by looking at this, we can tell that the outlier is 50. So it shows what the effect of having an outlier is. So on the mean, without that outlier, the mean was 14. With it, it's 20. So we're skewing the data quite a bit. The median, as you know, um, is that central point. That does not change, nor does the mode, because 15 is the most prevalent. And the range went from 3, which would be without the outlier, from 12 to 15, so 3, or 38 with it. So just numerically on some basic things, these outliers have quite a bit of an effect on some of our central tendency types of um, statistics. So here's a simple definition of what an outlier, an observation that lies in an abnormal distance. So we're looking at it from like kind of scatter plot, line graph, um, from other values in a random sample from the population. Now this alone does not determine whether or not, you know, it is a problem or it should be thrown out. Uh, there are statistical methods uh, for some analyses, whether or not you throw it out. In the case of fraud, that is definitely not what you want to do. You want to look at those because those may be um, one of our biggest, you know, things that could help us detect a potential fraud or a systematic error that is happening in the system. Anyway, so it, it is up to the analyst to decide, you know, is this abnormal? And in the case of us, we want to follow up on abnormal. Most of the processes that we are doing for statistical anal for analysis on data, what we're trying to do is compare what's happening to what we expect. And that is really what we're, ha what we're doing in this uh, example or these tests as well. What are we expecting to happen or what's norm or what's statistical norm? And is it different? And if it is, that's where we really want to dig down and investigate. So a couple statistical methods. One is, um, one is a exploratory data analysis. You probably looked at this a little bit in your business statistics class. Uh, we're going to use different methods than that. There's also scatter plots and the box plot. The scatter plot we saw one already was, which is all the dots, and then there is a data point that was way outside. 
the box plot will show different areas that are below. So here on machine number four, you can see that there's a whole bunch gathered together in the box and whisker, and then there's all these dots above and below showing that there are outliers. All right, so this chapter talks about three different tests for identifying outliers. The summation test, which is just trying to find unusually large amounts or counts in a data set of numbers of transactions. Actually, sorry, not the counts. We're just really looking for large amounts in the data set. Uh, what we're doing is finding the first two digits and then adding up the total for each first two digit combination. The largest subset sums the amount by a certain category. Probably the most common uh, that we are going to use is an invoice amount or a credit card charge or a check made out to a particular vendor. And then the largest subset growth is similar to the subsets, but is looking at time over, uh, you know, from prior period. All right, so the summation test. The first thing you do for each line item is you find the first two digits of each amount. We've already done that with the Benford analysis. Rather than this time getting the counts for each of those, you're going to total the amount. So for, for every two digit combination, you're going to try to find the amount. So here we have a little faked, oops, one too many here. Uh, spreadsheet. So on the left we have our data set, about 10, 12 numbers, totaling uh, 93,000. And then we have a column that just calculates the first two digits. So we have uh, several 12s and 98, 85, 73. So we have several single ones or maybe a couple, yeah, two 85s. But we have a lot of 12s that are the first two digits. I, as I said, this is not going to be a true test because we're only looking at 10 data, 10 to 12 data points. So on the right, we have a, a chart in that first column is the first two digits. So that column would have uh, between 10 and 99. And then the sum for each of those digits. So we had four data points that started with 12. We add up the check amount for each of those line items and get uh, 50229 uh, And we have a total dollar for all of the line items of 93000 So we calculate in the next column the actual percent of total. So it's just a percentage of total. So this 50000 which is the sum of all the items that have a first two digits of 12, is 50229 We divide that by the total of our um, entire data set, and it is 53% of the population. We compare that to the expected amount. So the expected amount for any single digit is 1.1%. And then we take the absolute difference here. So it's very similar to what we were doing with Benford's. So what we're trying to do is look for large absolute value differences. Of course, we can also chart this, and we are looking for peaks as well that are, you know, significantly higher. The largest subset, so here we have some fake data that has some um, about 10 numbers. Again, we have the vendor and the amount. All we're doing is actually the easiest way to do this is a pivot chart. And you take your row labels, which is the vendor, and you sum up the amount for each vendor and the number of transactions. And here we're looking for any abnormalities as well. Now, some of them we're going to have large data amounts, but they're very explainable. It's, um, you know, somebody we know we buy from often. It's a larger company. It's feasible. But then we have this, you know, a large vendor that might pop up that, um, is somebody we can't explain. We don't know who they are. We don't know what business they are in. Those are the types of things you really want to investigate. And the last test is the largest subset growth. And here we're looking at, you know, the number, amount of growth for from the prior year. So if the prior year is zero, we're going to eliminate those. And we're looking at, you know, things that went from we're spending $5,000 with them, and now this year it's fifty. 
Now, once again, we may know about that. We're in the middle of a law case. We are spending a lot of money with a lawyer. Uh, we have a new product, and we're buying a lot of parts from a particular vendor. So each of those are things that we could explain. It's those that uh, somebody doesn't have an explanation, or we don't have backup, and we don't want to just take explanations, but we want to look at backups uh, information as well. So those are the tests talked about in your chapter in this book. Um, I'll have another short video out there that really talks about some of the mechanics uh, and that will help you through the lab. So um, with that, we'll see you on the next video.